Hello guys, in this video we're going to learn about IBM Rational Developer for I. So here is the IBM Rational Developer for I. We're going to be using this software to create the physical file members and we're also going to use it for compilation purpose. So instead of using the PDM and the SU, you will be able to do the whole nine yards in one software application. So that is IBM Rational Developer for I. Now this environment is a beautiful environment because it is also used uh, for coding RPG, for coding CL, for coding Java Standard Edition, Java Enterprise Edition, and a lot of stuff. Now, when you open the IBM Rational Developer for I, it's going to give you this workspace launcher. In this workspace launcher, it asks you, where would you like me to save any of the files that you're going to be working with locally? For example, when I do my Java Standard Edition code and stuff like that. So for now, it, re it really doesn't make a difference for now. I can simply click OK on it. It's going to start and it's going to take me in this environment. Now we need to keep in mind that uh, we're going to be using this environment to remotely access the server. So that's something really, really important in this environment that you need to have a right perspective and then uh, you can choose your view. You can change your perspective right from the window menu. So under the window menu, you have an open perspective option. Remote System Explorer is the perspective that we are in right now. If you do not have it open, you can go under Open Perspective and you can choose Remote System Explorer. If it's not listed here, you can go under Other and then you can choose Remote System Explorer right from here. So now, uh, in the Remote System Explorer, we need to have the connection to the IBM server. So if we uh, open the new connection here we have the IBM I connection and in the IBM I connection we will going to be connecting to the deathstar.gtc.edu so that will going to be our connection so you provide the name of the host and then you go about next and then you hit finish upon clicking finish it will going to load up the deathstar.gtc.edu for you now here it lists the objects available to you in this environment and uh, we have the library list. If you click on library list you can get to see the library list. And then the first thing it asks you is to log in. So after we log in this environment it will going to then allow us to work with the objects that we own. So I'm expanding my library and it gives me the list of all the objects that I have access to that you need to have a library first in which uh, in which you can create your source physical file in which you can create your member and a member needs to have a record format and the and fields and each field has to have a name and a data type and then you compile the member and then you can add data to it we're going to be following the same trail we already have a library created what I want to do is I want to show you how you can create your source physical file in the rational developer tool so in the Rational Developer tool, in order for you to create your source physical file, the process is so easy. Instead of you having to issue the command create source file, physical files, CRT SRCPF, you right click on your library and you go under new. Notice it only gives you four options. You can create source physical file or a message file or a data queue or a data area. So it picks what you can do at what level. So now I can click source physical file. So it tells me, okay, uh, what would you like to call it? Uh, now notice here is the command I'm going to build for me as I start writing the command, uh, the information over here in the form. So this is where I fill in the information. I'll have my caps lock on. I'm going to call this one uh, my source physical file dbsu2. So as you notice that as I'm typing, it is filling the command down below. I hit finish and it creates it and highlights it for me. Notice the source code, uh, source physical file is of type file. It's an object of type file and it is pf hyphen src. That's the object type. Now, I expand on it, there's nothing in it, but I can certainly create stuff in it. So I right click on it and I go under new, and notice it only lets me create members. So if I click on members, now, whatever I'm doing right now, in the 5250, I use the SEU utility to do that. 
So now I'm right clicking on the member. Now this is where I need to provide the name of the member and I need to choose the member type and I'm going to give me the same environment as SCU to work. The name of the member that I would like to create rugs. Once I create a member I can give it a type. So now under the type I can click anywhere and on the keyboard press the letter P and I'm going to jump to PF. And notice all of these things are written for me down here. I don't have to type any of these commands. Hit finish. And here you have the environment very similar to that of SEU. Again, you do not write anything. All you have to do is you have to make sure that you press F4. When you hit F4, you have this prompt open for you right below. This is where you can make your choices. Again, the first thing that you do is you have to have your record format. So, we have created the source physical file. Now we are in the member. We're going to be creating our record format. And after that, we're going to be listing our fields and their data types. So, here we are. We will going to be choosing R, REC rugs. So one line done. Now I'm going to go to the end of this line and press enter. And notice I don't have to do I1 anymore. It's just a simple editor. Now I can start listing my fields. Rug ID. I can tab over. I don't even have to write a line anymore. I can just simply left align my numbers. Let's say I want it to be uh, size 5. And the data type, there's a drop down box to choose from. I don't have to remember the letters. That's amazing. That's beautiful. Uh, and then I can hit the apply button or the enter key. Either way, it just goes here. And notice it color codes it. I can press enter again. And then I can enter my next field here. Once you're done with all your fields, all you need to do is you need to save the changes, which is you can use the keyboard shortcut control S. You can click the floppy disk button over here. You can go under file menu and hit save. Either way, the changes will be saved. If the changes are not saved on the tab, you're going to notice this asterisk symbol. The moment I saved it, it's gone. That means all the changes have been saved. Now, before you compile, you have to make sure that your cursor is blinking in this editor. Once it's blinking in the editor, then you simply go under compile and you go under compile here. This is what whatever we are doing right now is equal into uh, what we would do in PDM. So now, since this is the first time I'm creating it, so I'm going to use create PF. If I've already had this object created and I'm making changes to it and I'm recompiling it, then I'm going to go under change PF. So create PF. After that, it tells me over here that I did not find any syntax errors on your code. After that, I notice that there are no errors over here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check my commands log tab. This is equal to display message. And over here, it tells me that the following member was added to the following library. Okay, so that means uh, the member was added to the file in the following library. That means it was compiled, created as an object, ready for data entry. So now let me go to my system I navigator and let me alter them by date. And let me refresh and here it is rugs. Rugs was created. So now like I can right click on it and I can edit contents exactly the same way I taught you in the previous tutorial that I can now enter rug ID, I can enter a rug price. And it will going to accept the input. Again, it's going to give me the journaled warning, which I showed you last time. And pretty much the rest of the information goes exactly the same way as before. So that's how you can create a member in the uh, rational developer tool and then you can compile it and then you can go to the navigator and add data to it. Hope you would have enjoyed this tutorial. We're going to continue working with this example in the next tutorial. We're, we're all going to teach you how you can change a physical file and then recompile it. Well, catch you in the next one. Thank you for watching.